The following Stealing the Mind Bible Conference presentation is by Mike Riddle and is entitled, How DNA Destroys Evolution. For a free catalog of over 200 awesome Stealing the Mind Bible studies on DVD, CD, or audio tape, call Compass at 1-800-977-2177 or on the web at compass.org. Well, isn't it a wonderful time to be a Bible-believing Christian? Not because it's getting easier, but because it's getting harder, and the harvest is ripe out there today. Well, today's talk is going to be how DNA destroys evolution. We're going to talk about DNA and something inside DNA called information. And if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you can defend what you believe. If you don't believe in the Bible, then you don't believe in reality, because I'm going to show you that today. I'm going to show you the only way to believe in reality is to understand and believe God's Word. So let's start with DNA. Now, I want to warn you, do not blink. <laughs> this talk is going to build and build and build until we get to what I call seven very exciting conclusions. And if you blink, you will miss something. So hold your eyes open here. So is DNA important? Well, let's look at it. Here's a quote. The genetic information system is the software of life. In other words, if you don't have DNA, you're not alive. So it is very important. It is essential for all living systems, DNA. So right there, we start off the importance of DNA. Now, our session goals. We're going to have two goals during this session. Number one, to logically and scientifically refute the worldview of materialism, which includes atheism, evolution, and secular humanism. We're going to do all that in 50 minutes. And then secondly, to establish at the highest level of scientific certainty the existence of an all-powerful, all-knowing creator. We're going to do that using his creation and his word. And the theme will be Romans 1, 19 and 20. Romans 1, 19 and 20, paraphrasing, says that nobody that's ever existed on this planet has an excuse for not believing in a creator. No one that has ever existed or whoever ever will exist has an excuse for not believing in the creator. That is God's word. <laughs> So, we'll start with two opposing worldviews. One is God's Word, one is man's wisdom. God's Word says God created the universe. Man's wisdom says the universe created God. That puts it very bluntly right there. Now, materialism. The universe and everything in it is the product of natural processes. That is what materialism believes, that everything that exists is nothing more than mass and energy. There are no supernatural beings, no God, no angels. All, all that exists is mass and energy. That is materialism. Materialism is the foundation for many other philosophies, such as secular humanism, evolution, and atheism. That is the foundation for all of these. And we need to understand that. Fa going to foundations, going to presuppositions, is the best way to argue with the non-believer, is we have to get down to the core, why they believe what they believe. Now, David Noble, president of Summit Mysteries, puts this very clear. When he says, in fact, secular humanism, materialism, is the dominant worldview in our secular colleges and universities. It has also made gains in many Christian colleges and universities. Humanists recognize the classroom as a powerful context for indoctrination. Folks, one of the things we're trying to do in Answers in Genesis, we're putting a new program together, take back our Christian colleges, our Christian schools, and our Christian seminaries, take them back from secular humanism thought. And you'll see how we're going to do some of that here. Because our biblical worldview is being replaced. What is it being replaced with? Something called evolution. Folks, there's too many churches today teaching evolution. February 20th, this year, for the third year in a row, 10,000 church leaders and pastors will get together to honor someone who lived, died, and stayed dead called Charles Darwin. Isn't that pathetic? That is the state of the church in this country today. And we need to take those churches back. And that's what we're going to start doing. We're going to start training teachers how to teach this subject, a biblical worldview, and train the next generation with a rock-solid foundation. It's being replaced. And as a result, many churches are in retreat today. They're doing whatever they can to change the Word of God to be like the Word of the world. Oh, maybe the flood was not a worldwide flood. Maybe God used evolution, folks. It's not a matter what God could have done. It's a matter what he did do. And he told us what he did do in the Bible. He did not use evolution. 
You see, right there we can tell people don't have a biblical worldview when they say, oh, God could have used evolution. That tells me they haven't read the Bible yet. <laughs> see, the church is in retreat. Now, Madeline Murray O'Hare, one of those atheists, who was very instrumental in getting prayer out of the schools, very instrumental in making atheism very popular in this country, makes this statement. We atheists try to find some basis of rational thinking in which we can base our actions and our beliefs, and she says, we have it. And she continues, we accept the technical philosophy of materialism. It is a valid philosophy which cannot be discredited. Essentially, materialism's philosophy holds that nothing exists but natural phenomena. There are no supernatural forces, no supernatural entities such as gods or heavens or hells or life after death. That is the main teaching in our secular schools today. And can you imagine we send a lot of Christians there? So here's the challenge. Here's every one of our challenges. The challenge by materialists is that the church cannot defend itself against the philosophy of materialism. As materialists believe the church cannot prove or demonstrate the existence of God. And number two, they believe that if materialism is true, then evolution must also be true. There is our challenge. Folks, we can accept this challenge because today we're going to show the worldview of materialism can be shown to be inconsistent with reality. We're going to accept that challenge. We're not going to run away from it. We're not going to compromise. We'll take God's word without compromise, and we're going to take this challenge on. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, let's examine evolution. Number one, we're told evolution is this upward progression. Upward progression from the very simplest to the more complex creatures. That is a wonderful story, but something gets left out of every one of our textbooks. It's called the most important ingredient of evolution. It's called information. Why don't they put that in the textbooks? You're going to see why when I get through this talk. See, all that change requires the addition of new functional genetic information. In other words, how does a land mammal become a whale? How does a dinosaur become a bird? It is called the addition of a new functional genetic information. How does this happen? How could that happen? It's called the addition of new functional genetic information. So basically, the origin, nature, increase of information is an important and critical component of evolution. Why did it get left out then? It's the most important part of Darwinian evolution, but yet there's no mention of it in the textbooks. Something is not quite right here. So in other words, what we're going to use in this talk is DNA and information, the information in our DNA molecules, to show that materialism is false. We're going to take that challenge on. It's inconsistent with reality, and if that is true, then all those others must also be false. See, in other words, rather than going after the direct, we're going to go after the foundation, after their basic presupposition, and show that it's not consistent with reality, which destroys their whole foundation. And what happens when your foundations are destroyed? You have nothing to stand on, do you? That's what we're going to do. Now we've got about 45 minutes left. <laughs> Let's take a look at our two sources of knowledge. One is God's Word. And you know where it starts? Not in the book of Matthew, but the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created. That is our foundation. All scripture is God-breathed, and it's all true. John 17, 17. Those are the two verses I use when somebody says, why do you believe the Bible? One, God wrote it, and secondly, he says it's true. Is that circular reasoning? It might be, but so is evolution. Evolution is true because evolution is true. That's what our students are being taught. Then God's supernatural creation, his natural revelation. Psalm 19.1 tells us the heavens declare the glory of God, not evolution in long periods of time. And then Romans 1.19 and 20, which is one of the theme verses throughout this talk, what does it tell us? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world, notice this, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as the eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, 